Uh, the TikTok meltdown is now growing with every single moment that we uh, are on the air. We're going to talk to Peter Hitchens about it in a moment. But Peter, I want you to have a look at this. This is the meltdown montage, as we call it. Goodness gracious me. I mean, I'm sorry to throw this at you, Peter, but what has happened to humanity? Why can people not accept that somebody has given, has, has given somebody the right to be in charge of a country uh, that they don't agree with? Well, I'm not sure about that. I, I think that a, a rational discussion of this is, would, would be nice, uh, actually, from both directions. Mm. I, I, I'm not at all sure, for instance, that from the, the, the simple position of, of Britain, regardless of how it's currently governed, uh, an, an America first type government uh, with high tariff barriers uh, is necessarily going to be good for us, nor, uh, as, as you know, uh, uh, am I an enthusiast for the so-called special relationship, a, a non-existent uh, alliance between a, a very powerful country to which we are heavily indebted and a, a very a very weak and uh, and, and declining country uh, which we are mm. uh, which has not uh, seemed to me to do us much good so I, I i i'm not particularly anxious to suck up to the american president whomever he or she may be right. uh, nor do i think that our relationship with america should be one of of, of, of poodle like uh, yearning affection which some people seem to want it to be so i and also i'm not I, I, I suppose I would class myself as being similar to the, the conservatives in America who describe themselves as never Trumpers. Yes. I've never been impressed by this man. Uh, I don't like what I see of him. And although he's undoubtedly he's the most skillful politician since the late Princess Diana of Wales, uh, he is uh, not by any means a pleasant uh, or kind or um, particularly moral man. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't rejoice at his at his arrival. I, mean, I see people like Carla Denia. Well, I, obviously, it's it's it, it's miserable for people like that to have someone like this election. That I suppose in itself I'm, is, is 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 a sort of encouragement to conservatives that it, it upsets uh, liberals, particularly green zealots, that he's in office. But how much will actually happen? I don't think that from the the global point of view his last term in office was particularly encouraging for conservatives and i'm not sure this one will be either and he will assume assuming all things are equal he will undoubtedly be a more effective president this time around because he's hugely more experienced in how to be president so we'll see much more about mm. what he's really like in the next four years than we did in his first four year term yeah i think so and i know that you've never been a big fan of his and and you've been very consistent with that but i just wonder why it is that people feel the need to be so kind of um Polarized. I mean, I will say to people that you shouldn't really have faith in politicians, first of all, anyway, because well, no, you then, You're right. then they're not going to make your... I mean, they might be able to influence what happens in your life, but, but you, you should make your own life and you should make your own way through that life and you should do the best that you can for you yourself and your family. And you should try not to pay any attention to politicians uh, as, 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 as little as possible, at least. Um, and so I don't understand. I, I fail to, to understand why people can either be so either delighted and and carried away with the sort of you know enthusiasm of what's going to happen, or similarly um, terribly depressed about it as people well, seem it's, to be. It's part, Mike, it's partly because of the death of religion. Yeah. People place enormous amounts of faith in governments and in, in politicians, which they really oughtn't to do. You're right. Uh, we are ultimately responsible for living our own lives. It is also true that in the modern world governments interfere far more in our private yes. lives than they than they ever used to. It would astonish a British person of a century ago to, to, to know just how much government interferes in their lives. And even in the United States, a part of the reason for the for the Trump revolt was I, I was hearing the other day this extraordinary thing about the, the Amish uh, who try and live more or less independent lives rather uh, rather impressively in the United States, yes. finding themselves the victims of stupid uh, regulations which made such independent lives increasingly impossible. Right. And that, that the United States has taken this series of very wrong turns, which it, it, it needs to put right. And a lot of people feel that Donald Trump might be able to do that. I suspect they'll be disappointed in reality because he's not that kind of... Uh, 
he's really not that kind of politician. But I think that it's it, th there is an enormous amount of faith now placed in politicians. And of course, its counterpart, the anti-faith of, of people who are, who are dismayed, who, who see their, their political god dies when mm. Kamala Harris fails to win the election and they're, they're profoundly disappointed and upset by it. Far too much, but again, it's, it's understandable given how much politics reaches into our lives. The green zealotry, for instance, which is, uh, which is in our lives, yeah. though, has an enormous impact on all of us, not merely increasing the costs of everything, but also uh, undermining our in industrial and economic prosperity in a, in, a, in a significant way. And during this week, Anybody who's looked at the energy dashboard, which anybody can go on... I saw the, that you've been putting that out this week. Yeah, yeah you see that the, the, it just demonstrates that there are times of year, and this is one of them, when, when wind will not produce any energy. And we right. only survive by immense use of gas, which everybody pretends is a green fuel when it isn't, uh, and by importing energy. Quite amusingly, we import energy from the Netherlands, which still generates quite a lot of its electricity using, will you believe it, coal. Yeah. Of one of very large coal-fired power station near Rotterdam. I went past it a few months ago. Yes, I mean, that is the problem. But funnily enough, the Green Zealots, uh, like um, uh, the leader of the Green Party, uh, Carla Denyer, uh, called Donald Trump a fascist. But those are the ones who want to impose uh, a way of life on us that we haven't actually, one, voted for, or two, asked for. Uh, which well, seems to be far more fascist than anything Donald Trump does. Well, I think the use of the word fascist, I, I, George Orwell long ago pointed out, is, is, is completely empty of meaning. It's just just another word for bad, and yeah. people who are politically illiterate uh, tend to use it rather a lot. Mm. Uh, there are s specific circumstances. I think one could say, for instance, that um, Marine Le Pen's movement in France has fascist roots and tendencies, and yeah. it wouldn't be... Uh, but to call Trump a fascist is to give him a, a sophistication he doesn't have. Right. Uh, he, he, what he is, 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 is he's, he's an instinctive populist politician, the first in the United States since the uh, figure everyone's forgotten now, the, the terrifying but brilliant uh, politician Huey Long of Louisiana, who Roosevelt greatly feared uh, in the 1930s might become a, a, a very dangerous populist national leader. He would have been quite like Trump, I yeah. think. Any smarter, but th this kind of thing does arise, and it arises when mainstream politics fails mm. uh, of the right and of the left. And this, the, the, this is the problem that, that I've been warning against for, for a long time. People are extremely rude to me when I suggest uh, ameliorations rather than solutions to the problems of the country, and, and call me all kinds of rude names. I say to them, "Look, you think I'm terrible. You call me a fascist and a Nazi, all kinds of other rubbish. But you wait and see what happens if you ignore." Uh, people, civilised rule of law Democrats like me who are traditional Christian conservatives, you see what happens if you carry on ignoring what we say. Mm. And I've said this to you, and what, and what I thought would happen was something like Donald Trump. And here he is, and I can't, I can't rejoice over it. Very interesting piece by my colleague Stephen Glover in the Daily Mail today, a conservative uh, critique of Trump, which I think uh, is, is worth, uh, very much worth reading. Yes, we shall certainly check that out. Peter, good to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Peter Hitchens, columnist at the Mail on Sunday.